back to Stacy so and so if you're new here welcome for the first time so glad you decided to join me today I am going to be giving a little refresh to my well-loved couch <laughs> so it's been really hot here as I think I've mentioned in previous videos heat index has been just off the charts for us the humidity and so I we have a front door that has like an oval glass window in it and it's really pretty but in the evening the sun would set as it starts to come over the house it comes through and it's like a greenhouse effect it's so hot you can't stand it so I remember that I had this fabric so I made a little for better word cafe curtain you know I found magnetic um, curtain rods for the top and the bottom and it just did a little gather on curtain and that has been great but the one thing about this fabric I actually got it at the thrift store uh, we had a local place I think that shut was starting to shut down it was before COVID they started shutting down and they were donating their excess fabric to our local heart and hand thrift store I have enough of this fabric even after doing that little curtain to cover the two bottom cushions on my couch make some side pillow cushions and arm covers and I think that will be a great way to kind of refresh the couch make it look a little nicer because I can't afford to go out and buy a new couch and I can't afford to have it professionally reupholstered so I'm like what can I do so my mom and dad came down yesterday my mom helped me get all of the pieces cut out so let me show you what we've had cut out and I'm just gonna walk you through the process of what I'm going to be doing and fingers crossed that it turns out great so here we go this piece and this piece have been cut to cover the bottom cushions and then this is the extra there's more there than you think there's gonna be plenty to do pillows and the arm covers plus I have extra scrap pieces if I need it while doing the arm covers and this is the couch right now I just have a blanket covering the cushions because they're in such bad shape and I get tired of having to adjust it all the time I'm going to cover these pillows the back cushions will stay as they are and then I will make you see how they're rounded the arms so we'll put a half circle and then cover the arms on the chair so oh fingers crossed this goes well so the first thing I did was I measured up six inches from the one end um, I did take a moment to serge the ends both ends I don't have to worry about the side because the fabric is just wide enough to for this project that was that to me says it was meant to be so I measured up six inches and the next thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to be putting a zipper in because I just don't feel like it but this is going to become this bottom part is going to become a flap that tucks around the pillow and holds everything in place so now that I have the flap pinned on the sides in place I'm going to fold the right sides of this together okay so I got it folded in half as you can see I have it pinned all the way up the side the flap is pinned in as well I am going to because this material is just big enough to do this I'm going to run uh, two rows of straight stitch up either side so welcome to day two of me refreshing my couch for only eight dollars I did get the cushions done yesterday and once I finally completed them I finally just had to take a break 
just wrestling those things around. My shoulders hurt right here so bad, but I think they turned out great. The only thing I didn't talk about yesterday um, when I was making the slip cover is I also had a box of the corners. And when I show you the cushions, you'll understand what I'm talking about if you aren't sure what that means. Today, I am going to be working on the covers for the arms and the cover pillows. Although I did discover something about the cover pillows, the pillow covers. I did discover one thing about the pillows and I will just wait and show you. It's going to be messy. But right now, let me take you in and show you how the cushion covers turned out. I'm really happy with the way they look. My husband really liked them too. So hang on and I'll take you in there to see them. Okay, there we go. They look really good. I'm real. I'm so happy with the way they turned out. So today we'll be working on the arm covers and covering these pillows. But I'm going to take one back in the sewing room with me so I can show you why it's going to be messy. Okay. So I brought this pillow back in with me. They do have, as you can see, a zipper. So I'm just going to take this outer cover off. You can see, well, maybe you can't, I don't know, but it's, it's pilled, it's snagged. I've had these for a long time, so it's probably time to let them go. But uh, it's really hard to get these unzipped because, there we go, they're down pillows. And one of the reasons you can't get the zipper to go all, back all the, open all the way is because the feathers, as you can see, have gotten stuck in the teeth. So I think I'm going to wait to when I, I'm not going to open this anymore. <laughs> I'm going to try to close it before the feathers go everywhere. I am going to open these up outside and just let the feathers float away. Um, and then I'll look at the condition of the pillows. I mean, Overall, they seem to be okay. I just, look at that. <laughs> They're molting. I may have to put another cover in between the pillow and the cover that I'm going to make. So we shall see. But the first thing I'm going to do is just measure how big I need to make the pillow. Oh yeah, it's not closing up anymore. Um, and I'm not going to be putting a zipper in this one because obviously if the feathers come out, that's just going to happen again. So I'm actually going to do it where it just kind of folds back on itself and you have a fold on the back of it, like kind of in the center of the pillow. You'll see what I mean when I do it. Um, it's a very simple way to make a pillow. So if you're new to making pillow covers, you want to make some for your couch or maybe you want to make some for outdoors. It's a very easy way to do it, especially if you're a beginner and you know, you don't want to have to deal with zippers or if you're in this instance where your feathers basically destroy your zipper. So let's get started on day two of recovering my couch for $8. Well, refreshing my couch for $8. Okay, so here's my pillow laying on my fabric. This is going to be, the width is going to be a little bit wider, so I'm only going to have to trim off a little bit. But here's what I'm doing for length. So I have some laying down here. Right now the material is doubled, which is great because that way I'm cutting out two pillowcases at the same time. So I'm going to have first, oops, look, more feathers. I'm going to cut off enough of the fabric from this far end so that it comes up to about here. And it's going to be seamed on either side but I'm leaving excess so that when I seam it up, I'll hem this like so. There we go. So this will be the flap that comes up over top of the piece of material that comes down here. This will be the flap that comes up and holds everything in place. Now I measured the pillow earlier and I don't know, it, it was probably 20 by 20 because this has gotten a little loose. When I measure it seam to seam, it's like 19, 19 and a half. So I'm probably going to cut it 
at 19 and a half inches in a square. Um, cause I do want it to have, you know, I want it to be a nice full pill. I don't want it to be completely flat and being that it is down, it will mash down easily. So first things first, let's cut my material. So here's the pillow, <laughs> still pulling feathers. You should have seen when I opened this up. I'm sorry I didn't take my camera outside, but I figured I'd be entertaining the neighbors. <laughs> feathers went everywhere. So I think we're gonna be okay. I am, not today, but I am gonna go buy um, some thicker like ticking material to cover this. Um, but for today, I am just going to make the pillow cover. Okay, so I got the pillow laid out the way that I need to sew it together. And what I've noticed is it just keeps expanding and expanding. So I'm really glad that I had not cut the sides down because honestly, with the way it's going, I think all I'm going to need to do is measure it all up. I think I might go ahead and just pin this all the way down both sides, go ahead and sew it. And then if there's any excess, I will trim it off with my pinking shears uh, or give it a zigzag stitch. Because as you can see, I don't have, I have about maybe an inch seam allowance. So yeah, so all right, I'm gonna get this pinned together and then just stitch down the side and I'll be right back. There we go. Pillow number one done. And I'm glad I didn't, like I said, cut the fabric ahead of time. It, every, it just, it's so squishy. I mean, it's great. But um, the other thing I, I'm definitely gonna have to make um, a cover that just stays over top of that pillow because the feathers just keep coming out. All right. One down, one to go. So I finished the first arm cover. I made it uh, long just because it looked better on the couch. So I was just gonna, before I finished the other one, I was just gonna kind of walk you through how I made it. So first things first, I made a little template. I just, um, my husband helped me. We taped a piece of uh, paper to a flat piece of like a thin wood and then just took a pencil and we drew the initial line for the shape of the arm because as you can see it's not just round it kind of curves down on the side so then I did a line of dashes around the top to allow for seam allowance plus I did that across the bottom as well so I made use that to make the front part of the arm cover. So measuring around the top of here, I determined how wide of a piece of fabric that I was going to need to attach, cut it, and I went ahead and just finished all the way around the ends. Now. Next thing I did was I folded my long piece of fabric that's going to cover the arm in half. If you have a fabric that, you know, is nice and sturdy, you can press a seam into it. Then I folded it up the arm cover piece, the front piece, and did the same thing. And just press the seam into it. So when I open it up, I can still see my center seam. And when I open this up, I just start lining it up like so. Where are my pins? Have you guys noticed every time I make a video, my pins always disappear? There we go then you just start doing that all the way around. I left excess on the outside so that I can fold it in twice and give a really good hem on it. 
before I pinned this on, I went ahead and did a hem across the front of this. Makes life easier. And before I sew this on, I will go ahead and hem the back portion of it. I'll pin this on. I zigzagged it in place first and then followed up with a straight stitch on the inside. Makes it more secure because it's going to get a lot of wear. And so that's all I really did and ended up with this. I'm finally done with the couch. I am very pleased with the way it turned out. Like I said, I'm not a professional when it comes to doing upholstery or making slip covers, but I do have enough skill that I was able to pull it off. So I can't wait to show you guys. So let's go to the living room so you can see what I've done. So thank you for joining me again this week. I hope that you found some inspiration and maybe a little, you know, maybe a little help and guidance if you plan on doing a project like this in your own home. It's not as hard as you think it is until you, you know, once you just start getting into it, you realize, okay, this isn't that bad. The hardest part, the hardest part was just dealing with all the extra fabric. I was so grateful that my mom came down and helped me just just maneuver the fabric so we could get it all measured out. Thank goodness I had a big dining room table. That really helped a lot. Um, it does help to have an extra set of hands. So like even when I was getting the slip covers on, those cushions are so heavy. It was great to have my husband here. It was a lot easier with two of us just putting them on. So anyway, thank you guys for joining me again this week. I also wanted again to take a moment to welcome new followers here. I hope that you find the content I make interesting and that you'll continue to hang out with us and like and comment and share. So you guys have a wonderful week. I will be back next week. And because it is July, I am thinking about maybe doing a Christmas in July project. I have, I have an idea of something that I want to make this year and I'd like to be able to do it with you guys. So have a wonderful week. I will see you next time and happy sewing.